Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel and today we are playing some more Historic here on Magic Arena and we are playing yet another Deck Timber deck. Uh, and again, this deck was submitted by our friend Born in our Discord channel. So thank you so much for submitting this deck and we're going to hop into it. But real quick though, let me remind you guys, uh, if you're not familiar with what Deck Timber is, Deck Timber is us giving back to you guys um i'm just saying thank you for supporting the channel and helping us grow um so i'm playing viewer submitted decks each and every day and i'm gonna play your deck as is and we're gonna play a few games with it see how we do then we're gonna go in we're gonna tune it up some and then we're gonna play a few more games see how we do and then we're just gonna talk about everything at the end of the video so uh that is what deck timber is and if you want to be considered for a deck timber video there's still time all you have to do is join the discord head over to the deck timber channel inside the discord and look at the pin post for the templating on how you can submit uh, your deck to be potentially considered because we do pick a random deck every day and we and we make a video of it. So uh, with that being said, real quick though, before again, before we hop into this amazing deck that was again submitted by Born, um, if you like the video, you like the content and you like this theme of deck timber, um, all I ask is that you like, comment, subscribe, check out all those cool links down below. So uh, let's hop into today's deck, and we are playing Uzi Does It. And again, submitted by Born in the Discord. Thank you again. And this is a Sultai deck with uh, a lot of land ramp, it looks like. Uh, and it's going to do some crazy shenanigans with what looks like Biogenic Ooze. So uh, if you're not familiar with Biogenic Ooze, this is a card we haven't seen in a while. So Biogenic Ooze is a 5-mana 2-2. Two -two. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you actually create a 2-2 two -two green ooze creature token. So 5-mana uh, for basically two, two twos. And, but then at the beginning of your end step, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each ooze creature you control. And then if you have leftover mana, for 4-mana, you can just make more 2-2 uh, two -two creatures. And then they're all going to get pumped at the end of the turn. And every turn, they're just going to get bigger and bigger. And you're going to make more and more. And... We're going to go crazy and kill our opponents with lots and lots of oozes. So <clears throat> how do we ensure that we get these oozes? Well, uh, again, at first glance, we have a couple copies of Incubation and Incongruity. Uh, Incubation is a look at the top five cards of your library. You can reveal a creature card from among them, put them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. Uh, Incongruity, I'm sure this isn't a card that we're actually uh, trying to play. Uh, but it could could be useful uh, three mana instant exile a creature and it becomes a three three green frog lizard creature token so the good thing about this card is it actually can deal with cards that are indestructible cards like uh, ulamog just crazy cards that are just really hard to deal with so we also have uh, a couple copies of growing rights of uh, it lamok this is a card we haven't seen in a while uh, back from ixalan uh, whenever it comes into the battlefield look at the top four of your library put a creature card from among them and put them into your hand and then uh, put the rest in the bottom. And then if you happen to have four more creatures, you get to transform this basically into a Gaia's Cradle. It's called It Lamont Cradle of the Sun, but it does the same thing as Gaia's Cradle does. It taps for a green, or it taps for a green for each creature you control. And then last but not least, another way to search this out is Turn Timber Symbiosis. Seven mana. This is one of the dual flip cards, the, uh, the modal lands. Uh, look at the top seven cards of your library. Put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. If it has a converted mana cost of three or less, uh, it comes into play with three additional plus one plus one counters on it. So um, yeah, we have a bunch of ways to actually dig through our library to potentially hit these oozes. And once this ooze is in play again, it can it can spiral out of control. But another way it can spiral out of control is Helm of the Host. So Helm of the Host, four mana equipment. Uh, it does cost five to equip, so it is kind of costly. Uh, but at the beginning of combat on your turn, you get to create a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. Uh, and if the equipped creature is legendary, the token gains haste. So if we get to Helm of the Host, our Biogenic Ooze, we're going to be making this Biogenic Ooze, which is going to make a token of the Ooze. And then at the end of the turn, they're going to, again, get plus one plus one for each one of these Biogenic Oozes that we have in play. So it's going to just, again, spiral out of control. We also have Lithoform Engine. We can copy an activated ability, so we could potentially copy the, uh, you know, create a 2-2 two -two token. We have, uh, oh, or triggered ability. So we could also copy the uh, plus one plus one ability that happens at the end of the turn. We can also copy an instant or sorcery in our deck, which we have plenty of, or we can copy a permanent whenever we cast it. So if we go to cast Biogenicus, if we still have four mana floating, 
um, or four mana available, we can just copy the creature itself whenever we cast it. So that is cool. And uh, so on top of this, like I said, we have a bunch of ramp in this deck. Um, it looks like Born put a lot in here. We have four copies of Grow Spiral, two copies of Explore, four copies of Uro. So almost the entire package. And then the leftover cards we have are some pretty interesting ones looking at them at first glance. I'm not really sure how they'll play, but we have a couple copies of Bantu's Last Reckoning. This is essentially a black Wrath of God for only three mana, but the caveat to that is, um, so it does destroy all creatures, but land you control don't untap during your next untap step. So this kind of leaves you vulnerable if you play a whole bunch of stuff in, you know, on that one turn. Uh, four copies of Masterminds Acquisition, so we can look through our deck and our sideboard, which we'll go over here in a second. And then four copies of Yeheni's Expertise. So this is a card that's been creeping up in a lot of decks. Uh, Yeheni's Expertise, you get to give all creatures minus three, minus three, which is good against all the aggro decks, you know, uh, goblins, uh, the white decks, the white green decks. Uh, but then you get to cast a three mana spell, uh, something that costs three or less for free. So we could put an Uro into play for free, a Growing Rights, um, we could explore or grow spiral. Um, yeah. So you just get a lot of value. You get minus three, minus three and a free spell out of it essentially. And then, um, the sideboard, it looks a little just kind of random and Bourne did tell me that the sideboard could use a little work, but, um, you know, we just got a little bit of everything pack negation for a counter spell, disallow for a counter spell, whelming way for bounce. We've got some removal and languish and ritual is set. We got a backup helm and a backup with the form engine, a backup ooze in the sideboard, a river's rebuke, scholar of ages, uh, finality of eternity, agadim's awakening. So there's just a little bit of everything uh, in this sideboard. So uh, again, uh, not really sure how this deck will play out, but it does look like a lot of fun. Biogenic ooze is a fun car that I have not got to play with in a while. And Sultai is a powerful shell, especially with so much ramp. Um, this deck does play 25 land, 29 if you count the turn timber symbiosis as land since they do flip into land. But that is going to be the deck. And again, thank you so much, um, Born, for submitting this deck. This Uzi does it. I like the name that you gave it as well. It is kind of catchy. So I, I hope it does uh, Hope it does do really, really well. Uh, but again, if you want to be considered for a Deck Timber deck, head over to the, deck t uh, to the Discord, jump down to the Deck Timber channel, and check out the pin post. And it's real easy to do. And maybe your deck will be uh, featured in one of these upcoming videos. So with that being said, let's hop into the gameplay, and we'll see you guys uh, right in the middle for the tune-up. All right, let's try, let's try some ooze. Ooze. I like it, I like it. Let's do it. Grizzly Bear. I hope you are true to the flavor of your name and just play a bunch of tutus that don't really do anything. Uh, you have Kira. Fully expected a Kahira deck to be playing the deck that we played yesterday, but it does not look to be so. Oh, wow, we just whiffity whiffed. All right, so we're just playing a... We're just playing against a Azorius control deck here. With Kahira in its sideboard for some reason. Might as well gain some more life if we're gonna do anything here. All right, so oh, they're on the nine lives plan, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Well, we already know we're taking the river's rebuke. Just need to get them to uh, tap out here. We need to draw a land. It's unfortunate. That's not the land that we were wanting. So... 
Let's let's maybe bait them into dealing with this ooze. Right? We know it doesn't get counters, but play that Kahira. All right, well, no counters, no counters. Get them to tap out for a Wrath. Wrath doesn't actually do anything, right? Mortal Sun, we're gonna pay life, and we're gonna target you with River's Rebuke. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, when was the last time you won the game by casting River's Rebuke on your opponent? And not just having them concede, but actually winning the game because of that card. Um, alright. Next game. Alright, so... You guys got to see something pretty spectacular there that we did not expect. So, we're gonna hydrate, obviously, going into game two. Oh, man. Ooh, that Siege Rhino life. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? But we go first. We're gonna keep. We have a lot of removal in our hand. Oh, this combo right here. Yehenny's expertise into Bantu's Last Reckoning. <laughs> that is not a combo. There's just a lot of removal. Well, if we can survive until Yehenny's expertise, we should be good. We got three Uros here. All right, mountain on top is pretty good. We don't have to worry about them doing unfair things. At least this turn, next turn, obviously, or during their upkeep. All right, so. All right, another land on top is good. Them not really having anything is actually pretty great. Pretty great. Pretty great. Um... I wish there was a cage in the sideboard. That's what we were going for. Um, so since there's not, what is the best card to get here? Probably just a languish. All right, well. We get to see a lot of goblins here. Probably get we probably get um Yeah, we probably get Muxist here. We could sack a token. Play a prospector. Something we don't hate. Something we don't hate here. All right, so I'm going to kill everything. You're going to play a new row. Not going to play this. We could potentially play that next turn. Again, though, Iron Crag Feet might get him to Muxus, and it does. How bad is it? How much damage are we taking? 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Muxus in the Muxus. Alright, so we actually net a life here by playing Uro. Yeah, the fact that there's no Graph Digger's Cage in the sideboard is pretty disappointing. Oh, and, uh... Yeah, unfortunately, we just uh, lose here to all the goblins. All the goblins swinging. So... Well, alright. That Siege Rhino life playing that, playing that goblin. That goblin life. Yeah, again... A uh, Graph Digger's Cage in the sideboard there would have been pretty nice. All right, next game. All right. So. Uh, yeah, Muxus is just too good. I hate Muxus. Wizards, please ban Muxus. And all of the other cards that I specifically don't like. <laughs> all right, we're going to keep this. So we're going to start off with an Overgrown 2. We're probably... Oh, no, these are the Food Sleeves. I thought this was a Mono Red deck over there. It probably still is, but... Oh, no, you are not. Okay. Well, we're just going to do this now. We don't want to get countered or anything crazy. I miss the days when you could growth spiral and drag your land out. Oh, okay. So we are playing against energy. All right. What are we going to hit here? What are we going to hit? An Uro. Okay. We'll take an Uro. Next turn, we take an ooze. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why I'm surprised all of a sudden. Um, so... Alright. Just do it to it. If they got a counter, they got a counter. Could have a stomp. Yep. Oh, or Harness Lightning, obviously. Forgot about that one. They are playing Energy after all. Oh, beware of the 2 2 ooze. Who shall kill you in 11 turns of attacking? Alright, so why would they. Why would they sack that there? So we have two cards. I mean, we're gonna play Uro. Oh, they they they're just gonna they're just gonna play there. Um, put that onto the board, and I guess we are gonna shock this into play. Yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna Etherworks Marvel here, since they have all of their. All of their energy. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. All right, so... Uh, so what does Servant potentially do? Servant potentially turns on Genesis Ultimatum next turn. How many cards we got? Four. Do we copy this? You know what? I think I think we're just gonna go ahead and do that.
I don't think you're going to be blocking. I'm going to be very upset if we should have Yehenny's expertise that turn. Okay, just a puzzle knot. Oh, you want to play the old uh, tradesy game, huh? Well... Um, I don't think I'm going to copy this. Yeah, still don't think... How much land do we have open? One, two, three, four, five... This is tough. Could get a counter. Counter's probably the best thing to get, to be 100% honest with you. Um, but we're just going to play, we're just going to play this game. So I'll feel good if this, okay. So they don't actually have a count, uh, a, a removal spell right this second, but again, they're probably only one. I feel like they're only one land away from Genesis Ultimatuming. So we cycle, we copy. I do like Lithoform Engines, uh, Ability sometimes. Ooh. So let's get in. I mean, if they want to make a whole bunch of guys and just block. Alright, well, <clears throat> I think we have to dodge one turn here. We get to Yehenny's expertise next turn. Oh no, they hit seven land. Please don't have it, please don't have it, please don't have it, please don't have it. Oh, they had it. God bless America. It was basically, I hope they dodged it one turn. What did they hit though? What? What? Okay. Okay, so... They have eight land. They have a servant. We have... <laughs> we have all of... Alright, so we are... We're going to do this. I mean, we're not going to. So we have to do this now, unfortunately, because we don't want them to block. And then by us doing this now, any of the tokens that they make are just going to be, are just going to get killed. And then this puts them one mana off of being able to cast a 10 drop. So... So, yeah, let's do this first. And then, hold on a second. Yep. All right, we got a lot of oozes. And you have nine mana available. Oh no, the one card I didn't expect. 
Why did we not expect? Ugin. Minus five, huh? Minus five. That is so horrible. So horrible. So what do we want to do here? I guess we're just going to Helm of the Host it, right? And then... I mean, we're going to keep... We're going to keep the real one. Interesting, it didn't ask me to keep this one. That's a bug. Still only have nine mana. Ten mana, obviously, we just we just can't beat that. Nissa. Yep. So we have to kill we have to kill Ugin. Hundred percent we have to kill Ugin. So they're gonna bolt us. Maybe they attack first thinking we'll block. Oh, so they don't... They didn't have it either way. They don't have a 10 drop. We were just playing around the wrong stuff. So they should have attacked us first, because then... Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, this game... This game is over. This game is... Very much over. Oh, especially another Ugin. Minus three. Minus three. Yep. You kill your servants. And. Alright. Let's, uh. Yeah, let's copy this. Whiffskies and Whiffskies. Wow, we just went through 14 cards and uh, and whiffed. So, all right. Oh, and then they drew Ulamog. All right. Well, we don't normally concede, but obviously this person has the game. We don't have any real win conditions in our deck. We'll look at the top one card when we draw, and then that will that will do it. All right, there is servant number four. Because they have one in their graveyard. Yep. Rise, my elemental friend. All right, they are just popping off right now. I don't think there was anything that we really could have done this game. All right, we'll take we'll take a look at one more card. I mean, we could get Henny's expertise. What does this really accomplish though? They still have an Ulamog and Ugin. Oh yeah. Um All right. We'll just go ahead and tell them good game. Good game. I see your 4 4 Ulamog. All right, Mr. Urn. We are dead. We are dead. All right, let's go. Let's go talk about this deck and see what we can do to make it a little bit better. All right, let's talk about this deck. This deck is a lot of fun. Um, we only managed to go one and two with the deck uh, as this original build shows. 
but and we actually got to win a one of our games spectacularly where we actually rivers rebuked our opponent um, back into oblivion uh, again they were playing a nine lives deck they had nine lives in play we sent it back to their hand the game ended so that was actually really cool to see because uh i can definitely now check that off of my uh my bingo card of crazy interactions that i've had on arena so that was definitely cool but let's let's talk about this deck uh, overall and what i really feel like we need to focus on uh, going forward when we actually uh, hit up the uh, the tune it up section uh, or the tune up section and actually um, make some changes so <clears throat> let's talk about uro and biogenic ooze so you know the name of this deck being uzi does it um we only have three biogenic oozes in the deck i feel like if we want to focus on oozes um like your uh like like born so born actually sent me this deck um he actually had an original version posted first but he, he switched it up uh and then so I, f I feel like he he focused a little more on the oozes and since we still have the name here maybe we still want to focus on the oozes so i think we do need to obviously go in here and add some more oozes to the deck because only three of um we could obviously add a fourth of and then some other oozes in the deck you know like maybe um scavenging ooze and then we have that legendary ooze that goes in search for creatures um and then we have four copies of uro and of course uro is probably going to stay in here because uro belongs in any sultai build um but the fact that we only have seven creatures in the deck that relies or that is wanting to search for creatures and hit creatures a lot um is a little interesting and i feel like that's that's maybe why we lost those other two games so looking at our cards over here so we actually have eight ways to search out creatures while we only have seven uh creatures to search so we would potentially one of these would be dead if we managed to cast all eight of these during one game so one of these would just fizzle but as you actually saw we cast incubation once and it fizzled we cast growing rights i think once and we hit an uro and then we managed to cast Turn Timber Symbiosis, copy it with Lithoform Engine, and look at the top 14 cards, and we got zero creatures. So I think that right there proves that we do need more creatures in the deck. Um, and then also, you know, we have we have uh, a bunch of ramp. We have two explorers and four growth spirals, but I, I say why not just go ahead and add in the other two explorers and then just have the full ramp package. So we do have 25 lands in the deck, so it's it's possible we could even... Uh, look at cutting a land because turn timber symbiosis actually counts as a land as well so um, we at least have that to play with um, i do think the sideboard needs a little work as well we can we'll work on that also uh, that game against goblins would have we would have fared a little bit better had we have a graph digger's cage in the sideboard to go get instead of like a languish and we ended up losing i think because we couldn't do anything about our opponent's muxus um, and then um overall i mean we have a ton of we have a ton of removal um but i don't necessarily think bantu's last reckoning is where we're going to want to be in regards to removal i think yeheni's expertise is potentially really good um you know as a four drop but then we need to be able to cast um you know we have a well we do have a bunch of uh two and three drops to cast off the Yeheni, the Yeheni's expertise so um, i do like helm of the host shenanigans with biogenic ooze we're probably gonna uh, stick with that as well and then masterminds acquisition again is great but we just need to change the sideboard and maybe just have some better one of targets that we can get in, in our deck so uh, let's hop into our time machine and let's uh let's work this deck a little bit and we will be back and let's see what happens all right guys welcome back to the tune-up and we are looking at this uzi does it version 2.0 and it's going to be a little interesting so we did go in here um we completely removed black so this is no longer a sultai build this is 100 percent simic and we do have some pretty spicy cards and it's going to look a little weird at first and even i think it looks a little weird but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun so uh as you can see what we did we obviously added biogenic oozes uh, or the, the fourth biogenic ooze excuse me didn't didn't mean to uh, correct myself there we also added uh three copies of scavenging ooze and also for uh, a little bit of a twist since we did remove black and the whole sultai aspect we don't have a way to tutor however we do have three copies of fave wishes so again with fave wishes 
This can be played as an early blocker. We can also use it to cast Granted, allowing us to go through our sideboard for a non-creature uh, card. Um, what's really cool is this gives us creatures to actually hit with the growing rights of it. it uh, sorry, it Lamok. Uh, also, I mean, if we happen to hit with Turn Timber Symbiosis, we you know we do. And also, whenever we hit with this. Um, this potentially just gives us a tutor that we can cast the following turn. And then if we hit with turn timber symbiosis, we can actually, um, I mean, even though this would be quite a big uh, four seven, we could bounce it to our hand and then cast the granted side again. So we did also go up to four copies of explorers. Um, and then we're going to try, um, we're going to try a little spice here. We've got uh, a couple copies of Hadama's climb. So Hadama's climb is a really cool card. Um, back from, what is this, Rivals of Ixalan, I believe it was. And it is an enchantment that says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if that creature has three or more counters, um, you actually flip this into a land that can actually start doubling uh, creatures and giving them flying. And, you know, evasion is really good. Uh, the creatures are going to be pretty, uh, they're going to get a lot bigger because you've already been putting counters on them. So we could potentially just turn two Fey Wishes, turn three Hadama's Climb. Uh, attack for two, attack for three, attack for four, then it's going to flip, and then we could just really just end the game there. Uh, also, you know, our oozes are going to be getting counters, so scavenging ooze, we can remove uh, stuff from the graveyard to get counters on it. Uh, biogenic ooze is also going to be hitting creatures, um, you know, or be putting creatures into play. It's going to be putting counters on the creatures that we control. Uh, and then, you know, we still have two copies of Helm of the Host. I did cut back down on that, and then I did not believe that we wanted to be playing the uh, Lithoform engine in this deck uh, in particular. Um, and then we're also going to play a couple copies of Tales End because we do run into a lot of different legendary creatures uh, and planeswalkers. Um, we have a couple of copies of Repudiate slash Replicate. This is going to be good because maybe we can really get somebody with the counter target activator triggered ability half of this. So that gives us four total here. Um, or we can copy something like a biogenic ooze or something crazy like that and then we are playing 61 cards we're gonna throw in a river's rebuke to see what happens and yeah we've cleaned up the sideboard we've got graft digger's cage we've got sorcerer's spyglasses we've got some planeswalkers in here we've got a rampage of the clan just for fun um against those pesky artifact decks you know they might get some three threes but you know who knows and then um yeah draw card uh omniscience for playing all of our stuff for free, uh, mass manipulation to gain control of a bunch of stuff if we need to, because again, at the end of the day, we are playing a ton of mana ramp. And then we have one Bajuka Bog in here, just in, in case our uh, opponents are doing crazy graveyard shenanigans and this Graph Digger's Cage just doesn't um, prevent what they're doing. So yeah, so that is gonna be this spicy Uzi Does It version 2.0. So uh, let's take it for a spin and we'll be back at the wrap up. All right. Can we get some wins with Uzi Does It? Version 2. Skill Gib is our opponent. All right, we get to go first. This seems okay. Definitely don't hate this hand. All right, what's our opponent plan? green is this elves just is it elves let's see so i think we're just gonna play one of these tapped say go i love some of the animations on some of these cards oh this is gruel okay this might be an issue burning tree gosh All right, well, what do we do here? What do we do? Could Granted, I don't think Granted actually does us any good. Could play a Fey of Wishes just to block. I don't think we should have played a land. Yeah, we should have we should have Uroed first, played this land off the Uro, and then played the Symbiosis. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 
But we are getting uber punished for this. This questing beast is going to kill us 100%. Go ahead and play this down. Let's play this down. Yeah. I guess if they attack, we can we can tails end a uh No blocks. At this uh Embercleave. Oh, gruel spellbreaker. All right, well, I don't think there's anything that, that saves us. So we are getting grueled. We are getting grueled. Uh, well, you know what? We're going to hold up. The tail's end, because we're going to counter the Ember Cleave that they always have. All right, Bone Crusher. Got it. I mean, we're dead. Just Questing Beast kills us. Oh, and they have a... <laughs> okay. All right, you did it. You did it. You did it. Yeah, just attack with everything. All right. All right, we got grueled. Skill bit. Skill gib got us. He grueled us. But we uh, didn't really have much. So, all right, on to the next game. All right, game number two. Slash game number five. However you want to look at it. That's how we're playing it. Wondering if we should have put land war elves in our deck. I don't feel like it. We were playing a uber creature package with as much ramp as we're playing. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so we could... As crazy as this looks, I think we're going to keep this. We can play a pretty early Helm of the Host. Well, not really early. We don't have the ramp for it, but we could draw a ramp, so. Question is, what is our opponent playing? If this is a ramp spell... Hmm... No, no, oh, it's tempting. And we just have the wrong lands for that. We just have the wrong lands for that. Oh, what do you got? An opt? <sighs> So are you playing are you playing Neostorm? Is that what this is? Yep, you're playing Neostorm. Hundred percent Neostorm. Alright, that's a card we did not want to see. The second helm of the host. All right, so there is their potential sack outlet. All right, well, I guess we're going to be eating the graveyard, right? 
I don't feel like it really does us much good. I mean, if you want to kill, if you want to kill our scavenging units, it's one hundred percent fine. All right, another sanctum. No point in attacking. Anticipate, really? So you shocked in so you could anticipate. Probably set up the combo here. So, they probably think that we're on a weird control deck, which we really are. We're on the we're on the weirdest of control decks. Neoform. You know, let's not let's not get crazy. Let's not get too crazy over there. So we will block this combat celebrant. I mean, they they can still win. They easily have uh, the combo again. Neoform into dual caster or blue wizard and yeah. But yeah, we will block. Uh, Uro? Is Uro any good? I don't think their deck plays Stomp. They're probably more likely to cast a Valakut Awakening here. So we could have saved it by getting rid of our Uro, but I'd rather just get them to get creatures off the board. So a braid, huh? Braid. Not gonna lie, I did forget they played a braid. So. I'm pretty surprised that they didn't just a braid in response to us equipping and then prevent us from actually getting a trigger. I mean, that would have been the play.
All right, so. I mean, we're just going to try to end this right, right here. This Fae of Wishes was... This might have been the best draw in our deck. They don't play a lot of counter spells, but they do play Pact of Negation. So... They do play a braid as well, so. Obviously we saw the abraid. They have another abraid. Oh, so they they're doing a pretty good job. No joke. They're doing a great job of really fixing their draw. Gilded Goose is pretty good. It's going to allow them to potentially, like, double Neoform one turn. It's Combat Celebrant. Alright, so this should put us out of range here. Um, hmm. That's pre that was a pretty good draw right there. I don't mind a new row. This repudiate is probably going to do some good work if they try to combo again. Um, yeah, we're going to pay some life. This is an interesting game. We're going to play this Fae of Wishes. So what do they have? Do they have another Valakut Awakening? Are they just going to gain life here? Could counter that, but... Much rather counter a crazy... Neoform comp, uh, copy trigger. Our deck is really playing like a really, really weird uh, control deck that is not meant to do what it's doing. And I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, let's see. Get rid of an abrade. And they don't really have any way to do to do instant speed type stuff like win the game. So I'm not too concerned with tapping out. This Biojank is as well. Six, four. No, we couldn't. Um, no, we couldn't have won there. All right, take five. So if we Fey of Wishes, I think we're just gonna cast this. We came here to ooze, we're oozing. We're at 28 life. The last two cards in their hand have to be Neoform and uh, a copy spell. All right, Neoform it is.
that comes into play. And we are going to make you think, what? All right, well, uh, what's one way to beat uh, Neostorm with some oozes? A uh, very slow and grindy game, and them not drawing their combo early on and just wrecking us. So, all right, good game, good game. All right, on to game three slash six. Who's our opponent going to be? Very, very tired. Okay, all right. Uh, opponent gets to go first. What do we do here? I think we're going to keep. This is a... I just can't put back a four land hand, especially with an Uro. Drawing the Grow Spiral actually was just icing on the cake here, so we're playing against Sultai, so... So they may Uro next turn, and we actually may get to eat it with the Ooze, so could be good. Could be good, could be good. Definitely don't want to... All right, come on, deck. One time, give us that, give us that biogenic ooze that we so desperately want to hit. Yeah, so we did that obviously, so we have access to this tail's end. Very, very tired. We're gonna take that win. We're gonna take that win all day, every day. We're gonna head into the final boss. All right. All right, final boss time. Hey, do you know your life total is a resource, so don't be afraid to spend it. Winning at one life counts the same as winning at 20 life. So. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. I, I believe in drawing a land. Don't believe in... Yeah, we'll play this. Don't believe in uh, winning necessarily against this uh, all artifact deck. But... Stranger things have happened. We get to grow a spiral into a temple. They get to play a... Oh yeah, they're just going to go full on. Oh yeah, well, grow a spiral. Alright, let's get a Fae of Wishes. Yeah, I wish that was a Tails End instead. Oh, there we go. So we're kind of keeping up with them, right? Old Carney boy. What are we giving you? Hopefully a... Nope. Not what we want to give you, obviously. It's not what we wanted to give you. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think we have to turn off this car in the Great Creator here. Holy smokes. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's just like a nightmare, right? Cool. 
literally the worst three cards we could see in their hand. Now they get to activate Karn. I mean... They get to play Ugin. Well, tail's end. Hmm. Don't know what to do here. Don't know what to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Probably just gets bolted. Is there a world? All right, so you're going to set up for when you Ulamog us. All right, so you're going to get the Hedron Archive back. Oh, this is a discard two cards. Discard. Discard. Know how crazy that looks, but. So let's, what are we getting here? I'm really thinking we're going to get this mass manipulation, right? Could get disallow. But I really feel like this mass manipulation is going to be a lot better. All right. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to cast this. They're going to target. We don't actually care about it coming into play. We want it in play. Now we get to take two things. Yes! Oh my gosh. How did we beat this stick? <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. So this is the craziest. Oh, that was the craziest game. We were about to win. They had Ugin and Ulamog in play. And yeah, we didn't really get to ooze. But we had our uh, little crazy mini combo here in our hand. So uh, good game. Let's uh, Let's talk about this. All right, everybody, welcome back to the wrap-up. Um, 
let's talk about what we did. We uh, First off, we got to win in a bunch of unconventional ways that we typically don't get to see against some different decks that we um, don't necessarily... I'm not saying that we don't win against them, but we don't win in this particular form or fashion. So first off, in the first set of games, we got to cast River's Rebuke against our opponent when they had the nine lives combo out in play. Um, and, and then since we bounced the nine lives to their hand, it left the battlefield, so they lost the game. That was really cool. Um, really glad that we that we actually managed to do something crazy like that with this deck. Um, it was the only it was the only win that we got with the original um, Sultai list. And then, and, and, you know, I'm not going to lie. That's part of the reason why we decided to throw in a 61st card into this deck as a river, river, river's rebuke, just in case we got to do something crazy like that again against uh, the nine lives deck. Cause before that, while we were playing earlier in the day, we were playing uh, a lot of our, um, one of our big red bolus decks and we were playing against a lot of nine lives decks. So I just figured, oh, well, it's just going to keep happening. So let's just be ready for it. Um, but we didn't see any more of those when, once we switched over to Simic. But we did get to win. We beat um, we beat the Neoform combo deck. We went three and one in our games with this Simic deck. Uh, we beat the Neoform, um, the Neo Storm combo deck, so to speak. Um, didn't think we would we would beat that. We beat that because we played cards like Tails End and Repudiate in order to counter the uh, the triggers from the the uh, double uh, the dual the dual caster mages. Uh, whenever they come into play, they can, you know, copy a spell. And when they came into play, we countered the ability with Repudiate and Tails End, and they weren't able to get those those uh, extra t copies. And then our Scavenging Oozes just kind of got in there. They were removing stuff, you know, gaining us a little bit of life. That didn't really, really play uh, into it too much, but it actually ended up winning us the game overall. Um, and then also, you know, we did get a, we did get a quick concession, uh, but then we also beat the Artifact deck. Um, and we beat the artifact deck in a really weird way. We got to, like you just saw, we fay of wished, uh, we, or, or granted, uh, as the card is actually called. And then, uh, from granted, we went and got, um, the old card that I can't think of right now, mass manipulation. And from mass manipulation, um, you know, they knew that we weren't going to be able to do much with it if they, uh, Ulamog's uh, our land so they tried to Ulamog our land and we could have countered Ulamog but instead we tails ended the the triggered ability or, uh, from Ulamog on the cast and said you know what you're not going to exile our uh, our land and now we're going to uh, mass manipulation your Ulamog as well as your Ugin and win the game that way so that was a lot of fun and Again, it's really cool when you get to see, um, you know, when you get these really cool decks uh, or wins against these decks in ways that you never really imagined. Now, we didn't really get to do a lot of what we were trying to do. We didn't get to play a lot of oozes. Um, I feel like we played more scavenging oozes than we did biogenic oozes. Um, the Helm of the Host came into play a little bit. It didn't do a lot of work. Um, obviously, the... The land ramp package is really, really good in any kind of Simic or Sultai shell. Um, but yeah, uh, if we were to build this deck again in the future, I think we would definitely rebuild it a lot of different ways. But there are just cards that, you know, I just want to try out sometimes. You know, I, I really wanted to see something like a Scavenging Ooze into Hedama's Climb into just start beating, 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 beating. Uh, that could have been really good, potentially. Um, you know, it would have been awesome if we actually could have gotten Helm of the Host off on one of our biogenic oozes. But uh, again, the way we built this deck, I felt like it did kind of lean towards a more of a weird control deck. Um, and I didn't really intentionally mean for it to happen like that. Uh, but again, it's just part of seeing a deck that we're not used to playing and then adding you know, weird, you know, adding cards into it and then, and then looking at it and saying, oh, okay, well, that's a cool card. And then looking through our collection and saying, you know what, we haven't, we haven't played this card in a while, or we haven't tried this card out yet. This could be a potentially good, uh, a good use for it. And that's how you brew decks. You know, sometimes you just, you look at a card, you say, oh, that could be fun, or that, that could potentially combo with this and let's see how it works. So uh, yeah, that's what we did. And it worked out. We went three and one. Uh, can't be upset. O overall, we went, what, four and three? Um, still a reasonable record. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, enjoy the deck, uh, again, thank you so much to Born for submitting this deck. It was a lot of fun, and I'm glad it, you know, morphed into what it did.
But again, if you want to be considered for one of our deck timber decks, please, please, please head down to the Discord channel, uh, join the deck timber uh, channel within the Discord, and just check out the pin post for the template on how to submit your deck. Uh, and then if you enjoy the video, the series, and the channel uh, at all, please just like, comment, subscribe. Check out all the links down below, uh, the Twitch link, the Discord link, and the Patreon link. Uh, anything you can do uh, in regards to checking out links or like, comment, and subscribe helps the channel immensely. And then again, uh, I just ask that everybody stay safe. We will see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel.